All right, good afternoon. This is our 4 p.m. update on Kentucky's response to the coronavirus. Uh, we've been doing these at 9 and 5 on the weekdays and 4 p.m. on the weekends. Uh, let me start the way we always start. Uh, we are going to make it through this. I know every day the news out there sometimes can make you anxious, sometimes can seem uh, a little scary, but we are going to be okay. We have to stay calm. We have to understand that we're all going to have to change our lifestyles in different fundamental ways, and we got to be a good part of Team Kentucky. If we are going to change the curve in what we expect of these cases, if we are going to protect our loved ones that are out there, we have to be willing to change our practices and everybody has to be uh, a good teammate. A couple of places that while we have seen some really good response out of Kentuckians have to be better. Number one, when we make a run on supplies and you buy an eight month supply of something, that means other people who need it aren't able to get it. That is not being a good teammate. Fear can cause so much more harm than this virus ever will. Remember, there's four and a half million Kentuckians out there and we want everybody to be safe as they get through this. So remember, when you were there at that store, I know you're nervous, I know you're seeing other people getting a lot, be responsible, be responsible. Second, this weekend, we saw in some instances hundreds of people uh, going into one bar or one club. We are asking people to make major sacrifices in this state. We're shutting down schools for at least uh, a couple of weeks. Um, we have to make sure that these efforts work. And if you go out and get in a small place with a hundred plus people, you frustrate those efforts. Uh, James, can you put up the, the graph, the line graph? All right, this is what we're talking about each and every time, trying to reduce the contacts trying to make sure we create the social distance so we can better protect people. Uh, what you see in the blue is what happens if we do business as usual. If people just shrug this off and say, well, they might be uh, doing social distancing, they might be canceling schools, but I'm going to do whatever I want and go out in a large crowd. If we do that, that's what we get in the blue. Folks, we got to make sure that we are all doing our part to make sure that we create one of the other parts of this line graph, uh, that we uh, reduce uh, what would be the impact on our healthcare facilities, which means everybody who needs help uh, can get help. Ohio uh, just issued an order closing their restaurants and bars. And if we cannot show responsible practices in how we social distance, uh, then uh, I will be forced to do the same. We're not there yet, but hundreds of people in a small room does not reduce the contacts that we have to to better protect our people. So I'm just asking everybody to be a good neighbor. Now, we can and we will get through this, but it takes everybody, everybody. Uh, some good news, uh, though I had hoped at this point we would have all 16 members of the Grand Princess on a motor coach coming back to Kentucky. We have 14 of them. Uh, the other two um, are on an airplane uh, to get to the uh, same facility that the motor coach just left for. We're going to go and we're going to get them tomorrow. Uh, it left a lot later than we wanted it to. We thought we could get all 16 people together for those 14 that have been sitting around waiting for it all day. I'm sorry for the delay, but we are really excited to get you home tonight. Uh, again, these are our people. I don't think that they've been treated the way they should. We will take responsibility for them here in Kentucky. I know a piece of news uh, just came out, and I want to reassure Kentuckians on this, that uh, there's been an individual uh, tested positive in Louisville that was at a large event that I was also um, at. Um, I was, uh, uh, because of, of the directive from um, our public health commissioner, uh, and his terms uh, being mission critical on this response, uh, tested negative uh, yesterday. Uh, so uh, I will still be here 
uh, each and every day, making sure that I do what I need to do uh, to help get us through this. Now, um, people we know are going to test positive, and that's okay. We just have to take the right steps to make sure that they are okay. And they're going to continue to work and do other things through this. And I'm going to be prepared if the case arises to do that as well. It'll look a little different uh, than it looks right now, uh, but my uh, promise to Kentuckians is we will work through this. We will work through it together. And we're going to make sure that everybody, and, and including those that, that, that end up having the coronavirus, everybody that we, we will get through this um, and, and let's get everybody out on the other end healthy. Our update tonight is um, we believe uh, as we sit here tonight we have 20 total positive cases. Uh, that would be two additional from the update we did uh, online last night. Um, I believe uh, they are five from Fayette, six from Harrison, five from Jefferson, and then one from Bourbon, Montgomery, Nelson, and Clark. Um, I'll just read through the entire list. A 66-year-old male from Bourbon, a 40-year-old female from Fayette, a 46-year-old male from Fayette, a 31-year-old female from Fayette, a 47-year-old male from Fayette, a 31-year-old male from Fayette, a 27-year-old female, 67-year-old female, 68-year-old male, 54-year-old female, 60-year-old male, and 51-year-old male, all from Harrison County. And then the Jefferson counties are a 69-year-old male, a 67-year-old female, a 68-year-old female, an 80-year-old female, and a 73-year-old female. Montgomery County is a 56-year-old male. Nelson is a 53-year-old male. And Clark County is a 49-year-old male. Uh, we still have uh, one individual uh, who is in bad shape. Uh, right now, we do not expect uh, that individual to recover. Um, a, the coronavirus is not the only factor um, in that individual's condition. It is certainly a contributing factor. Our prayers are with uh, that individual's family. I want to go over steps that we have taken uh, to date. Um, declared a state of emergency to give ourselves the tools that we need uh, to address uh, this coronavirus. We activated the Emergency Management Operations Center and the State Health Operations Center that lets us communicate with two very important different groups. We announced Kentucky's uh, COVID hotline, 1-800-722-5725. That's the coronavirus hotline, 1-800-722-5725. We're getting about 2,000 calls a day on there. We want people to call that number. What it is for is to make sure uh, that we don't flood our health care system. That means those who need help the most can get it. Uh, so if you'll show the infographic, James, it's very important for folks out there, and we're all nervous. Uh, this is something very new uh, to all of us. But again, we, we only get through it uh, together and, and by, by all of us being good neighbors. So the infographic on when to seek care, it's important to follow. If you are well, but you're nervous, I understand. Call the hotline, uh, don't overwhelm our system. Make sure you're not taking away uh, resources from those that need it and need it immediately. If you are sick, but otherwise would not have sought care, again, think allergies, think a, a cold, Call the hotline. Um, do not overwhelm our, our health care system. But if you are truly sick and would have sought care or you are injured, get the care that you need. You know, just a couple, uh, those are just a couple of basic rules uh, that will help us make sure that we can help those who need it. We issued an executive order to prohibit price gouging. If you see it, call 1-888-432-9257. In the cell phone age, you don't have to put in the one. So let me read it again. 888-432-9257. Uh, we have adjusted state government sick leave policy to ensure we have paid sick leave and the amount people need it and we want to make sure that businesses are doing the same. Uh, we are publishing and continue to publish all the CDC guidelines. I just remind you that uh, they point out th those most at risk. Those are people over 60 and if you're over 60, um, please believe it. 
please believe it. I know that 60 um, uh, is, is um, we, we, we believe that, that 60 is still um, young, but the CDC says uh, that those over 60 should have uh, additional significant concerns, as well as those with heart, lung, kidney disease. Um, uh, think about uh, diabetics, uh, which we have hundreds of thousands of in Kentucky. For those vulnerable populations, uh, do not fly. Uh, and uh, do not get on a cruise ship. Uh, we're recommending social distancing, not just for the high risk, but now for everybody. Uh, again, if we want to make sure uh, that we do this right and that we protect our people, it requires that everybody um, uh, stay home as much as possible. That doesn't mean you have to be in your home, but it means you are not out in crowds um, and that you stay uh, in public six feet away uh, from others and wash their hands, um, wash your hands often. James, can you show our new uh, graph? I want to give you an idea of, of uh, this was in the Washington Post today, um, what we believe um, taking these strong steps uh, can do and why it is so necessary. Uh, for those that can see it, uh, the Washington Post ran um, a, um, a chart showing the Spanish flu uh, in, I guess, 1918 to 1919. And it shows two different cities, Philadelphia and St. Louis. In Philadelphia, they started their aggressive steps a couple weeks too late. Shows you what um, taking these steps and taking them early can do. And what you see is not just a spike in cases, but a spike in deaths. Uh, St. Louis uh, took their steps uh, much more quickly. Uh, after the first several diagnosed cases, and what you saw was an ability to protect uh, the most vulnerable and the loved ones in that city to a much, much, much greater degree. Uh, so we don't put this up to, to scare people. Our health care system is much better, much better in 2020 than it was in 1918 and 1919. But this shows the importance of taking aggressive steps. For those that say, but you only have 20 positive cases. As we see the direction that this can go, uh, I'm not going to be the governor that acted two weeks too late. This is about protecting each and every one of us. Uh, we have uh, had calls with all 120 county judges to update them, make sure their emergency management network is up and running. We initiated changes to Medicaid and signed an executive order uh, with regards to private insurance to work to eliminate any costs associated uh, with treating the coronavirus and with testing. Uh, we hope that we will see widespread testing uh, sometime in the future. Uh, our, our mission right now is to deal with the reality that is on the ground. Uh, we have uh, recommended uh, eliminating uh, visitation in long-term long care facilities and nursing homes except in end-of-life situations. We signed an executive order to allow pharmacists to refill prescriptions up to 30 days and to stage pharmacies if we need to outside of the pharmacy. Uh, we asked um, all our school systems to uh, cease in-person classes uh, beginning on Monday and every school system, every public school system has agreed. Um, as a new piece of news tonight, I don't have the exact number, but I believe we are getting close to having all of our systems approved. Uh, to provide uh, uh, types of learning uh, remotely uh, should they uh, opt to, to do so. And keeping our kids engaged during this, as you saw yesterday with Dr. Brenzel talking about it, is really important. Uh, keep them on a schedule uh, and make sure that, that you're communicating in appropriate ways with them. I have two young kids. They're also nervous about this. I uh, understand the anxiety uh, that goes along with that. We've closed our prisons to visitors. And we've advised that all community gatherings should be canceled or postponed. Again, if you're putting together a large group of people uh, for a community gathering, you are making it more difficult uh, for us to reduce the contacts that are out there and to get the result we so desperately want for the most vulnerable. Uh, we suspended out-of-state travel for state employees. Uh, we're encouraging all businesses to allow employees to work from home if possible. Um, we have recommended the temporary closure of senior centers. Uh, that is um, a, a difficult step, and we understand that. Um, we are working uh, 
uh, with uh, local communities to ensure that meals can still be delivered. Um, but when we think about the most vulnerable congregating in one place, uh, it presents uh, an opportunity for that virus to spread. We announced that uh, Kimi, Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance, will provide wage replacement and benefits for first responders and medical personnel who've been quarantined uh, for the coronavirus. They are our frontline workers. We got to be there for them. We announced boards and commissions are going to cancel in-person meetings. Instead, use video teleconference technology. Uh, there's going to be a link where the public can watch all uh, of that. Uh, we followed the emergency declaration from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, which provides regulatory relief from commercial drivers who are providing direct assistance in the coronavirus relief efforts. The USDA approved our waiver, waiver to be able to serve meals to students during non-traditional instruction, and that is um, the, the other approval I was talking about was for most all districts to be able to do non-traditional instruction. Uh, for those watching, we have so many acronyms in state government. This one is called NTI. Um, also issued guidance to state agencies to decrease on-site staffing by at least 50%. That is our initial goal. We've got some big office buildings here in Frankfurt. We are going to be looking um, at ways to where everything the public needs that can be done remotely to be done remotely. And every day, we're going to continue to look at different ways that we can reduce those contacts. We want to model behavior that we want to see out of businesses. And every day, people should think through uh, what they do and how they do it and how we can, uh, again, reduce those contacts and better protect people. Uh, we ask Kentucky hospitals uh, to, to be ready. Oh, we ask Kentucky hospitals to cease elective procedures by the close of business Wednesday, March 18th. Uh, we are having ongoing conversations with them about um, uh, what is or is not an elective surgery, but let me be clear about this. We absolutely must be ready if we see a significant influx of cases, which means we have to take the steps to be prepared for those cases. Uh, again, I'm going to be the governor that takes that aggressive step to make sure that if we see a spike, then we have uh, done the steps we need to have that additional capacity to see those that, that, that need it. Uh, I know the people most likely to be affected in that are going to be our parents and our grandparents, and I want them to be around for years to come to be with my kids and everybody else's kids and grandkids. We are working to make sure that COVID-19 testing will be free to all Kentuckians, even if they are uninsured. Uh, we're asking child care centers in Kentucky to create plans for closure that they could implement within 72 hours if it is deemed necessary. One area where we are going to have to make exemptions and we're working through it is for our health care workers. Uh, with what we have to be prepared for, um, we're going to need to make sure that our hospitals and our other health care facilities have those workers that are, uh, are there. Uh, we've taken steps um, and we took the step which we hoped we wouldn't have to. Uh, the first time that we've had to force uh, a home isolation when a coronavirus patient uh, initially refused to self-quarantine. Uh, my understanding is that they are making a number of calls uh, to the media and to others right now. This is a really irresponsible decision. This person tested positive to the coronavirus. All we asked is that they self-isolate. They can do it in their home. They can be comfortable. All we're asking them to do is not to spread the disease that's out there. Uh, and because they refused, we had to take those steps, and we will do it again if we have to, to ensure that we can protect uh, the public. I know that individual probably isn't happy, but they are in their own home. Um, and uh, I hope uh, that, that attitudes can improve and that this is the only time that we have to do that. Uh, finally, uh, we have now issued tips and guidance to help support good mental health and relieve anxiety uh, during this period of time. I want to focus on this for just a minute, and then we'll open up to questions. Um, we know that we'll get through this. We don't know exactly how long it's going uh, to take. We know that when you reduce social contacts, and remember, um, social distancing is not isolation, and it shouldn't be isolation. If you do not have the, the coronavirus, um, we want to make sure that you do have human interaction, but you have to have it in the right confines, and we have to be able to reduce overall contacts. Mental health 
is going to be critically important getting through this. Uh, make sure that you do things that help your mental health. Uh, so today, I think I took the dog on about 14 walks. She's a puppy. She needed about five of them, but she got a lot more. My 13-year-old dog went on about half of them. That's about all she can take. I had to carry her up the stairs by the end. Uh, you know what? Those walks were better for me and for my family that went with me uh, than they were for, for the dogs. Um, I threw baseball with my son, uh, or he threw to me because he's got a, a finger right now to where he can't, he can't catch. We set up a bucket of balls, and we let him throw. Those are all things that we can do uh, as a family that help uh, in this time. Uh, we talk about this. We don't talk about it all day long, but we talk about it. And that's critically important too. And let me ask everybody, you do have to shut off um, all of the information that is coming in, at least some uh, of the day. I know there are networks that would like you to watch all day long, but it is not good uh, for your mental health. Let me remind people that 80% of people that get this virus, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna show little to no symptoms. The reason we're having to take all of these steps is to protect the most vulnerable. So let's remember our two duties. Number one, you do everything you can, practicing all that good hygiene to make sure that you uh, do not get the coronavirus. And number two, uh, you prevent from spreading it to others. So if uh, you, wanna, you wanna get energy out, get outside, go for a run on your own, uh, do not pack in uh, to one place thinking that this is not a big deal. Yeah, what you're doing probably won't hurt you but it could really hurt somebody else. That could be somebody's parents, that could be somebody's grandparents. I'm just asking you to do the right thing. All right, with that, I'll open it up to questions. I have both written questions and people who are here. Uh, once again, I do have one reporter that has both written questions and is here. Morgan, you win that one again. All right, let's start with Chris. that the communication was murky late on a Friday night. And they contend that maybe they weren't communicated with in a way that made things clear to them on Friday night. What, what did you know, what were you told? Uh, most of the information related to that case is currently under seal. Uh, but what I was told is that we had a uh, patient that has tested uh, positive for the coronavirus uh, and has refused to self-isolate. Do you know if the health departments are taking a concern if there's a a protocol set in place to make sure when they communicate with people if they've been released from the hospital before they've tested that there it is abundantly clear uh, I, 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 let, let me say while well, I was not there when someone was released from the hospital but somebody being released from the hospital that still has the coronavirus that has not done had the, the negative test yet absolutely knows that they need to self-isolate uh, and I don't want to get in a back and forth I'm not going to identify the individual but Everybody has a responsibility in this, uh, and our hope is this is the only time we have to take these steps. Tom. Uh, first thing, Governor, of uh, the two new cases, I know Clark County. This uh, one. I heard that before. Where was the other one? I, I believe when I look at the numbers, if uh, it's, it's Jefferson. I believe that's the case because I believe the last two last night brought Fayette County to five. Is that everybody else's understanding? Again, one in Jefferson, we only have a verbal confirmation on. Um, I do not believe it is a duplicate now, uh, but we haven't been able to confirm that in our lab. So we're going ahead and we're saying that we have 20. I believe we are more likely to have 20 than, than we thought with our numbers yesterday on their accuracy. But remember, we now have three labs, and I hope we'll have more. And we get the information in in different ways. So what I'm going to try to provide each day is the absolute best numbers uh, that I can. I believe we have um, still at our state lab for tonight, 19 additional 19 uh, additional steps. Now, as we move forward and more labs come online with more capacity, which is what we want, uh, our state lab won't be the driving lab. Um, the, the, the state will more be the clearinghouse where that information comes in, and it'll be coming in from a lot of different areas. Morgan. You said that you took a test for the coronavirus last yesterday and tested negative. Can you clarify what was the event that you were at the speed ball at the Speed Art Museum? Yes. Plants like 
Wait, what about if you think it's a good idea that they temporarily close and you have tons of workers that like that? We, we right now are asking businesses to do everything they can uh, to stop the virus within their workplace. And what that means is where it is possible, social distancing, uh, where anyone can work remotely, uh, they ought to be, uh, to look at your surroundings, to encourage, and when you can, in a workforce, force uh, good hygiene. That's just saying if, if you can add extra breaks, uh, stagger them where people wash their hands and engage in good hygiene, uh, they should. Uh, we also have to make sure that if you're sick, you don't go to work. Um, and I used to say, if your kids are sick, don't go to school. Well, now we're not uh, having school at least uh, for the next couple weeks. Tom. Um, anything new have you heard from the General Assembly on whether they still plan to come back Tuesday? Do you have any arrangements to perhaps you're working with legislative leaders to speed up uh, the process, maybe pass a quick continuation right. budget, go home, and then come back later? So the question, I remember I'm supposed to uh, uh, repeat the questions, is if I've talked to the leaders of the General Assembly um, and have any update on what they might do in the, in the session. There are more parts to the question than that, but um, I have not talked to them since we talked yesterday. I do have a text from one of those leaders, and we'll talk to them tonight. Uh, where we see this is going, um, and where we, we if if uh, where we could anticipate having the surge that we've got to be ready for in our healthcare facilities, uh, I believe that it is increasingly clear uh, that they need to do um, the most important work, do it in as short order as possible, uh, and then go home. Uh, we cannot right now guarantee how long. Uh, that this will take. Uh, we cannot say for certain uh, that we would be able to have them back in enough time to, to pass a budget. And what we see is um, the dollars are so critical when it comes to this. Uh, and uh, what we need is a budget for right now. And so we're all in uncharted territory here uh, with the impacts that this is having on the economy and to everybody's personal finances. And we're going to get through it. Uh, we are going to make sure that we protect uh, all of our fellow Kentuckians, and then we're going to have to get to the work of restarting, and in some instances there will be some rebuilding. Uh, but we've done it before, and I know we can do it again. Yes, ma'am. Um, in the instance with the North Carolina crisis, if they do try to leave again from isolation, what are the repercussions of that? Um... My understanding is that there is a sheriff's deputy uh, outside. Uh, again, these are resources we shouldn't have to expend. And we hope everybody will do this voluntarily in the future. Will there be force, though, as far as um, like maybe tackling, tasing? Just well, we, I, we, we, haven't, we haven't hit that point. And, and even with um, what I hear is the individual disagreeing, I don't think anybody thinks it's going to get to that point. Let me read a couple questions, uh, if I can. Uh, we have a question on concerns about food shortages in grocery stores. Uh, we are starting to look into this. I'm working on creating a call with CEOs or, or operators of our major stores tomorrow. Uh, we, first, we, need, we just need Kentuckians to be good neighbors and realize that if you take eight months of baby formula, it means another mom won't be able to get it. Uh, we ran into that issue yesterday. Uh, we were able to find people uh, who, who had some um, uh, at home, but, but we take care of each other in this state, and let's remember uh, through our fear and through our nervousness that we have to do that. Um, but we, we do need to have conversations um, with the, the food industry and just make sure we have the right practices in place uh, to where that supply chain can continue um, as we are uh, moving. Uh, there's a question on um, the Red Mile being open for slots and betting parlors uh, and tracks. I believe that you will hear some news from those organizations um, uh, perhaps tonight, if at the latest, uh, early tomorrow. Now, there's a question here about uh, the two individuals uh, who were at a separate uh, Air Force base. Um, the 14 were at Dobbins. Uh, these two were at Lachland. Uh, we uh, were able to finally get them on a plane today to get to Dobbins, uh, but there was so much of a delay we had to go ahead and, and take the 14 at Dobbins. Otherwise, they weren't going to get home today. We're going back for them tomorrow. Again, it's taking too long. 
There have been frustrations at every step, but I will tell you this is happening because I absolutely demanded it, and our, our Commissioner of Public Health has demanded it. These are our people. We want them back home. Uh, they have been through too much. Let's take some, some more in person, and then I'll get to some of the other written. Yes? I believe that the health department there in Louisville is taking steps. Uh, I believe that there are uh, some folks that um, have already been called and that those calls uh, are coming. Uh, that's, that's the information I have at the time. Al. Any feedback from churches today? There was a report in Hopkinsville that very few were cooperating with your call. Uh, the question is, has there been any response from churches today? Um, my church um, uh, did a virtual service. Uh, and uh, I appreciate them for doing it. As I look at the congregation in my church, uh, it is at least a third filled with the most vulnerable uh, for this virus. There has been uh, at least talk in, more, in Montgomery County um, about potential spread through a church there, and we have a direct link between uh, two of the Harrison County individuals that is their church. Again, I don't think having church or going to church during this is a test of faith. I believe God gives us wisdom and has given us so many tools uh, to be able to participate in worship remotely or, or through other areas. Um, I know that there are people that might politicize this. Uh, and every time I talk about my faith, um, I hear that. But uh, I love my church. It's an important part of, of my life. My faith is uh, an important uh, driver in helping um, me make the decisions that, that I'm making uh, during this crisis. We just need everybody's help. We don't need people to be exposed to the coronavirus that might not be able to recover. And so I would hope that going forward, everybody thinks uh, through it and, um, and hopefully makes uh, good decisions moving forward. And it's, again, I've heard that churches are being singled out. You're not. Houses of worship aren't just being singled out. We are trying to get every community gathering uh, to be canceled for in-person attendance and instead to be done remotely. We're asking that of everything. Morgan and then Chris and then. Who decides if for the UNL and LabCorp labs, who decides whether or not a, a request for a patient to get a test actually gets conducted? Is that up to the state health department to clear those or is that up to UNL and LabCorp themselves? That doesn't come through the state. No, they just send it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the question was, who decides with the other labs uh, whether or not a test is run? Uh, Dr. Stack is here in the audience. Again, we're trying to practice good social distancing. Uh, his response is it is up to um, that clinician that is working with them, uh, hopefully following those CDC guidelines. Uh, but I will tell you that each of those groups is also facing the same resources uh, that we see on the ground here. We all want to get to a point where everybody who wants a test can get a test. And I will tell you that when that day comes, and it will, we will ensure that we have a manner uh, to, to uh, do that widespread testing. We are already making those plans. Uh, we are going to be ready. I wish this would happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen tomorrow. We keep uh, getting different timetables, and, and they keep changing. But what I know is we have to plan for what we see on the ground right now. Chris. What will the protocol be for the people coming back from the cruise when they get to Kentucky? Will they be able to go home? Will they be isolated? Will they, what's the protocol? They are going to self-isolate, and I believe they are just self-isolation. Yes, and then yeah. the, the clock started when they landed. Yes. So, so they have been self-isolating the period of, let me start back. Um, the question is for those who are on the cruise ship, uh, what are the next steps uh, being taken? Uh, they started self-isolation at the um, Air Force bases that they were at. Uh, that will continue once they get home. Everybody has agreed to, to do it. Uh, yes? What about had several viewers um, canceling trips and things like that for those traveling? How far out, any guidance on how far out they should be canceling things or any guidance? Yeah, I wish I could give people um, any type of certainty about how long it's going to be. We're going to make it through. I know we're going to make it through. And we're going to have to be resilient uh, because you know, we're, we're, we're looking, we're, we are looking at more than weeks. Uh, but we are uh, going to make it. I would not uh, remake plans yet. 
Uh, and, and as we uh, move forward, what I hope we see are the steps that we are taking it means we're more like St. Louis uh, than, I'm sorry, we are more like, let's put it up, more like St. Louis than Philadelphia. And that means if we have impacted the curve, and I know all this sounds very theoretical, impacting the curve means we're protecting people. It means by changing the level of contacts, doing social distancing, canceling all of these events, it means that fewer people are harmed uh, because of it. Uh, but don't fly. Don't get on a cruise ship. I saw uh, a story on a national news outlet where a cruise ship company was trying to offer deals. Listen, I know it's going to harm that industry, but every single Kentuckian that's listening to me, don't get on that boat no matter what they offer you. Uh, not yet. I believe we'll be able to do that um, if what we believe is, is going to happen and, and, and that person we ultimately lose. Uh, I still want to try to respect their family, especially in what may be uh, the waning hours. Okay, I've got a few more that I want to read, and then we'll just take a couple more. Um, I think I answered one. Uh, one is about uh, state buildings here in Frankfurt from our, um, our, our Frankfurt paper. Um, under what circumstances would large office buildings such as Mayo Underwood, Transportation Cabinet, and 300 uh, Sour be closed entirely? We are not there yet. Uh, the two things we are trying to do is to uh, decrease um, with a goal of 50 percent the numbers of employees that are in the office and then also decrease um, any in-person need to visit those offices. And you're going to see we're going to have a number of e-regs, we're going to have a number of changes to make sure people can get documents they need, um, that, that get services they need, when right now it might have to be in person. We're going to have to do a lot in this, in this interim um, uh, legally to make sure they can still get the services uh, that they need. I think we answered the first question about U of L or LabCorp conducting a test for a patient. Uh, the answer to the second piece is, does the state health department have to approve? And the answer is no on that. And, and so we hope that um, our hospitals can get from any source uh, as many tests, uh, as many kits as they can, but they also have to use them responsibly. You know, there have been other locations where they just tested the first people who came in no matter what, and they're out and now they don't have them for the people that need them the most. So every group that's out there doing this, we're asking to be really responsible. Now again, we are all in this together, and I would like to think that if we were all at one place together, um, we would want those that are most hurt or most sick to be in the very front of the line, and that's what we're doing here. Have any doctors or nurses in Kentucky who have treated coronavirus positive patients received a test? Uh, I believe that that is the case, but I do not believe that we have a positive on any health care worker um, uh, as of this date. Uh, let me say, uh, these people are heroic. Uh, with faced with what um, we're faced with, um, they are there. They are doing tests. They are treating people. Uh, it's really incredible, and we ought to appreciate them. We're going to take the steps to try to protect them as much as we can, but you know what? They're doing it each and every day, and boy, do we need them as we move through this. Uh, and then there's a question, has there been any discussion of keeping the Ashland Hospital that's about to close open? Uh, we're looking at different scenarios uh, each and every day. That's one we haven't had a discussion about yet. They may have had it uh, locally. Uh, there are a couple of questions in uh, Nelson County, but I believe we have answered those. Uh, what statute um, am I using or has been used uh, in the Nelson County incident? There are a number of different statutes that come into play or could come into play. Uh, they include KRS 214-020, KRS 39A100, KRS 387-660, KRS Chapter 209. Uh, and right now, uh, the documentation uh, on, on uh, regarding that individual is under seal. Uh, I get that was uh, done locally there. One question, was anyone infected while the Nelson County individual refused to cooperate? We don't know. But anybody who has tested positive that is not in isolation runs the risk. Uh, remember, though, that just because you've come into contact with someone that has a coronavirus does not mean 
that you have the coronavirus. If you are using good hygiene, if they are using good hygiene, um, just like uh, other um, viruses that, that uh, are communally spread, uh, you, you may well uh, not have it. And again, um, now having um, lived through this a little bit myself, I know that that can be nerve wracking. 80% of people that are gonna get this, you're gonna be okay. So if you end up in that situation, you're gonna be okay. And understand as you go through that process uh, that we are gonna make it out on the other side and that um, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, we are gonna get there and we are all gonna get there together. The most important thing is everybody's gotta remain calm. Again, fear runs on, on grocery stores where you don't have enough for everybody else. Those are the types of things that can harm more people than this virus ever will. I'll take a couple more. Morgan. How many patients have been denied a test by the state that was requested by the patient's doctor at this point? Roughly? I don't think we have a number uh, on that. All of these, uh, all of these decisions are made uh, jointly, uh, and the best decisions are being made for those that, that need it the most at, at this time. Governor, that is yeah. really uh, uh, one of the biggest look backs that's going to be done in this country question and I understand the uh, difficulty in uh, producing a number at this point but are we going to be able to get a number at some point to that question? Um, my hope is that uh, in the very near future that we have the lab capacity uh, across this country to where anyone and everybody who wants a test gets a test and where what we do at the state is to compile the data uh, that, that comes back. Um, I believe in what we have seen uh, to this point that uh, our people at the state have done their very best in very trying times with a virus that didn't exist until three months ago or that we didn't know about and there was no test because it didn't exist uh, and so you know I believe that our health care system is responding as well as we can there's no question that nationally there is not um, uh, the, the uh, resources uh, and the testing resources that we need to exist on the ground right now I'm going to do everything I can to, to get us there. Uh, my job is to deal with the day-to-day -day at the moment and to protect uh, Kentuckians as best I can. But once we get through this, are we going to get a number? Well, I hope that once we get through this, um, our number uh, that is most important in Kentucky is that we've lost as few people as humanly possible. And Al, my job uh, from now until the end of that is to do that. And then afterwards, people can look at all the data that's out there uh, they can go over any decisions I've made. I'm going to stand by all of them because um, there are a lot of people that are vulnerable in this state. And we have some of the highest rate of diabetes, of, of lung cancer, of heart disease. We've got a lot of vulnerable people out there, and I want to protect them all. We'll do two last ones. Um, the governor of Ohio has also said he thinks that schools may need to be prepared to be shut down for the rest of the year, and I was wondering if that's something that's on your radar. Uh, we are not, uh, the question is, the governor of Ohio has said that schools may need to be shut down uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, we're not ready to recommend that, but we do think that we at least need to be prepared for, for longer closures. Yes. Have you been able to issue a response to the ACLU from uh, roughly about three days ago asking about um, the releasing those who are against or wouldn't make bail or couldn't make bail? So we haven't been able to release a response on that yet. We'll work on that. All right, thank you all very much. Nine o'clock, uh, Monday morning.